what should you be prepping for back to school as a STEM teacher? Some of you, this might be your first year going into a STEM position from being in the classroom, or some of you even got hired but had to start off the year online in a previous year. Wherever you are at, you are in the right place, and even if you have taught STEM before, you could definitely learn some tips and tricks that have worked well for me, and I am passing them along to you. I am Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current K-5 STEM teacher, and I love helping teachers like you navigate STEM and technology in their own classrooms. So let's get started with the STEM teacher prep for day one of STEM back to school boot camp. Now, I have my camo on as your guide. Now, I'm not super strict, so we'll take it easy as it goes with all of these tips. For the first one, when you are getting started in your space, wherever you're at, definitely tackle and organize that maker space. Now, even if you don't have a whole lot of materials to start with, you can start collecting now and have a little bit. And in fact, it's actually nice to have a little bit instead of a lot to get started because it can get overwhelming fast. Now, if you are in need of boosting up your supplies, you know you're going to start the year with a maker space project, organize what you have first and then start asking for donations. The cool thing about a maker space is that it, a lot of it is recyclable materials, which is really awesome and easy to get your hands on. And so if you ask families in the community if you already have a good connection with them or even if you have a back to school letter, you can add that in and you'll be surprised by how many uh, supplies you will start gaining to fill up that maker space. Also, ask some staff members at your school. I had a few friends uh, collect bubble wrap for me for a project, and that came in so much quicker than me saving on my own. So definitely enlist in your friends. You're usually not asking for a whole lot of things that have to be purchased anyway, and some people are happy to purchase as well. So start organizing that maker space. Once you do have some basic supplies or know what you're going to be collecting, have designated spots, of course, for those materials. I really recommend having one bin per item, unless they're really small things like googly eyes and beads and buttons, those can go into one drawer. But have one uh, bucket per item or drawer, where however you're organizing it, and then label those things, of course. And with the labels, have the words of the object, but also have pictures of the object as well. Um, that will help with you as you're cleaning up at the end of the day, but ultimately the kids, when they're trying to find materials for a project, they can easily access that with the supports that you have in place on those labels. Also, when you have those things around the room, Try to have them in a place that are easy for kids to get. You're building up that independence. So for my makerspace items, all of it is at kid height. They can grab things when needed. I can find them when needed, of course, but the kids are can be very independent when working on projects. So nothing is up high that I have to go and dig for. Everything is ready to go. If I do a project last second, then I can go find those materials. So keep them at kid accessible height accessible labels, and it'll make it so much easier and you have it ready to go for the whole school year. With those labels also, ha having a way that they can be interchangeable, whether they're on Velcro or little pockets is super helpful. That way, if some unique thing that you get donated depletes, then you could switch it out or have two buckets for things. So sometimes I'll have a couple buckets at the beginning of the year for cardboard scraps, and then as that project goes on, it will deplete a little bit, so I'll switch it out with something else. For your second thing when you're working on your getting ready for this back to school is updating that welcome letter. And I think that everybody needs that reminder, especially if you're transitioning from a classroom teacher into a STEM position, just like I did. Um, really think through what your letter is saying and the message and your intentions for teaching that class. You probably have, of course, a lot of the same values that you did as a classroom teacher, 
but think about how you're going to translate that into a STEM or media specialist or technology specialist space and how you are here to support the students with that creative and innovative learning. Also make sure that your pictures are fairly current and that any information about you, little facts that you want kids to know is current as well. I had to go back and update my letter because in the past year I actually um, had some life changes happen and that was something I just didn't really need to share this year. So that was something that I definitely wanted to add to my letter. You can also make that letter fun and engaging. Think about maybe making a collage of your list of your favorite things. And that's really fun for the kids and families to get to know you in a more personal way and how they might not have known that those things about you before. So I do have a template that is completely free that you can grab from my store, Naomi Meredith, Teachers Pay Teachers, um, that you can edit and download and share digitally or print if you would like and put it on those spaces for families to get to know you better. For our next tip, when you are preparing for the back to school year, your STEM teacher prep, you really wanna think about organizing that student information. And again, coming from the classroom, this was difficult for me to transition to. I really struggled with um, how I wanted to do this. And the best system that I have found is organizing student information by using binders. So I have four rotations at my school. So I teach a new group of kids uh, every week for four weeks, and then it starts over the next month. So what I've done is I created four binders and then each grade or each classroom has a class list with all the kids names i also have the pictures of all the students helpful for when you're learning the, all of the students names also helpful if you have guest teachers in your room or substitutes you have the pictures of their faces right there and then um uh, all those, in, all the information that are student specific, like IEPs, allergy needs, and all those, that type of document. So I have that organized by class. It's really nice to have it in one binder instead of just one, because one binder gets really, really heavy and really big if you're teaching all the kids in the school. So if you have to rotate into rooms, or if you have a fire drill, or any other type of situation where you're watching a class, it's nice to grab that one binder and have it ready to go. Now, if you've already had classes before, this is a great time to go through those binders, get them organized, labeled with the correct teacher's names, and then even shred documents that might have been from the past years if you didn't do that at the end of the school year. Along the lines with student information, this is a great time to set out set up class accounts that you might have to set up manually. So there are some accounts that I don't have to go in and add student names, like our uh, learning management systems. Those are already connected to our school accounts already. But thinking about programs and software that you think you're going to be using throughout the year that students will have to connect to, this is a great time to get it ready. You already have the class risk ready to go. You can get all the class codes set up. So when it is time for those projects, you're not rushing and screaming you're like, oh no, I have to make a code. I've definitely have had to do that. So some websites you might want to consider is what accounts students are using for typing, if that's your responsibility to set up, if classroom teachers um, are already setting that up. Uh, if you're going to be using a 3D print program like Tinkercad, you can set up all those accounts, get the codes. You could even put them in the binders if you want to stay organized that way. And so you have everything good to go. Even think about if you created accounts last year, maybe you need to archive some of those or hide the classes so it's all organized and clean. And when you are creating, this is a really great tip that has helped me out immensely when I am naming classes with anything, is I have the homeroom teacher's last name, and then I put at the end of that the year. So whatever school year you're going into, like 2021, I always put that at the end. This is helpful if you want to go back and look at examples where you're like, oh, I know this kid did a really great um, project. I want to show this group. This will help you search and know which class you're looking for, and you can easily find that information. 
going along with updating, you probably already updated your teacher letter, but think about having a classroom website. Now, maybe if you never had one before or you don't understand the purpose of it, think about your classroom in a way as a little business. You are the boss and you have your little employees and you want to keep the community updated on information, including the students in your class. So why not have a website? It's like having a business card and something that you can actually teach from. Um, I know a lot of teachers, again, who use their website as a teaching tool. So they pull up their website and they have all the links ready to go. And the kids know that and they can access that website as well. This isn't technically your learning management system where you would assign documents to the students or make a copy, which you definitely can. That can get a little messy, but this could be even the slides you're going to use to teach, the video links, so it's all in one place. So that could be one part of the website. Also that meet the teacher letter, you can repurpose that and put that in your website as well, your about me section. In that about me, definitely put in ways that families can contact you, that's very helpful, so they're not searching for your email. A lot of times those school websites are kind of hard to find emails that I have found over the years. So put it on there, make it easy for parents to access. And then you could also add in your schedule, what what times that kids have your class or when you're pushing into classrooms, if you have that information, and then eventually adding any clubs, after school clubs that you're potentially going to be hosting and the information to sign up. So keep it very simple, but this will be like a hub that you can refer to and use throughout the year. The more simple and direct you have it, the more um, easy it is to update and it's not something that you create the first week of school and never look at it again. So make it a helpful resource for you, your students, and the community. Next is with decorating. Now, I'm all about decorating, obviously, you can see behind me, this is my office, but when you're thinking about your classroom getting started, you don't need a whole lot to decorate. I actually change out a lot of things um, throughout the unit, so main posters and all that, those change to keep it um, updated and relevant. I actually don't have a whole lot of wall space anyway, but when you're decorating, be thoughtful about the messages that you are putting out on the walls. Are they culturally responsive? Are they encouraging students? Are they things that you can refer to. So something that I have in my classroom, I have a blue and a green wall in my room. I dream of these walls, but I have a blue and a green wall and they're used actually for green screen, which is pretty cool. And at the top of one of them, I have my growth mindset sayings. And these are things I refer to K through five throughout the year. So yes, they're cute. They're little light bulbs very easy to print and hang up, but they are things that I always refer back to and things are things that I recognize with the kids. So they're purposeful decorations. So we think about the world in new ways or when kids are really struggling, this is too hard. I say we do hard things in here. So this is something I'm always referring to all the time. Um, even the other quotes and sayings on my walls um, are the same thing. These are things I'm always referring to. So those are staples I keep up all year. And like I said, I have a space where I will interchange things out. Um, a lot of times I even display learning anchor charts on my screen when I'm teaching because it does get pretty crowded if you're teaching multiple grade levels. It's just a lot. So keep your decorations fairly simple. It's actually a lot easier for you to prep those go-to things that you can keep up all year, have a cute little things. I'm all about that too, but make it very personable and culturally relevant and things that you can refer to all year. And last, when you have calmed down from the week, so I'm thinking about this, what you could work on during the week, is really start thinking about your year-long plan. Now, if this is your first time in STEM, you're like, I don't even know what to teach for my year-long plan. I get you. I understand. Um, so you know, of course, you could get started for back to school for the first month. Think about ways that you can have kids build community with each other. How can you keep playing upon that? You already know, as a classroom teacher, they are building up that classroom community, building up ways that they can communicate, critically think. Think about those routines and also that community building in your classroom. So those types of activities are really great. I start my year off now, I used to not do this, but I'm always going to, um, with this whole unit called STEM Survival Camp, and it's about helping kids learn the engineering design process, but also being creative with limited, limited materials and if they were to survive the land. Um, I actually wear this shirt oftentimes in that unit. So that is a great unit to start with and then transition maybe into more digital citizenship now that students have used a little 
little bit of technology, how can we continue to use that in safe ways? So think about your year. I like to plan in big chunks of units. So oftentimes there's lots of ways to plan um, oftentimes i've seen teachers just kind of do things really random like this sounds good but be very intentional about, about your planning how can you think of bigger units and then have that progression now if you don't know where to get started i'm going to link everything i've mentioned um, down below in the comments or the description but when you're thinking about those units um i have created a whole year-long plan that is integrated that you can actually grab for free and you could get an idea idea of what you might want to do in your class and all the lesson plans are also linked as well. So when you're thinking about this, you're like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. It is a lot in a way, but you're setting up systems and routines that are going to help you be successful all year. Of course, the lessons are going to come, but think about ways that you can keep things organized and streamlined, and you're going to thank your past self for setting that up. So if you made it this far, I have some exciting things. If you're watching this close to real time, some exciting announcements and giveaways. And for each day of this STEM boot camp. There's three days, there's different things that you have the opportunity to grab. So for today, we have our boot camp day one. So it's naomimeredith.com slash boot camp giveaway one. So you have to spell the letter one. It's all one word. And when you use that link and put in your name and your email, you will get sent to you right away a free engineering design process poster so you can get that printed and hang that up for your class and use it year long, even print it out really big. And this is a really awesome thing that you can refer to. So you will get that. And also when you are use this link, you will be uh, submitted for a giveaway. So I will announce that at the end of the week, you'll be notified if you win and you will be, um, submitted in the giveaway for Teachers Pay Teachers gift card. So you can even buy some more things to help with your classroom decor. Now, along with that, if you are in the mood to go shop, my entire store this week is on sale to help you get ready for your back to school so you can get some of those little things um, ready to go, save you some time, enjoy the rest of your summer. Um, but my entire store is on sale so you can go grab some of your favorites on the wish list. So it's um, Naomi Meredith, just type that in TPT and you will be good to go. So thank you so much for joining me for STEM Boot Camp Day One. I hope that you have thought through some of those processes. Feel Feel free to reach out to me. I am very active on Instagram at Naomi Meredith underscore. Of course, you can email me as well. Contact Naomi Meredith at gmail.com. And then all of the replays, maybe you found it even here, are up on my blog. So you'll get all three days there once they're posted. It's Naomi Meredith.com slash STEM boot camp. Thank you so much again. And I can't wait to see you in our next boot camp day.